on average about 40,000 kilometers. This is how far every person is estimated to walk during his or her lifetime. Our knees bear the brunt of every one of these steps. Prosthetic knees need to be able to bear the same load. They are made from metal components and plastic inlays which can quickly wear out. This can result in their loosening. Anka Muller from the Institute of Production Management, Technology and Machine Tools IFW at the Leibniz University in Hanover, Germany researches the production of ceramic prosthetics. The material is robust and therefore also poses a challenge. All ceramic prosthetics are made from sintered components. The sintered ceramic component is so hard it can no longer be reworked by milling, at least not economically and without damaging the ceramic. This is why this makes grinding processes necessary to implement very small material changes and produce high surface roughness and form textures. After the grinding process comes the polishing. The polishing steps are very intricate and expensive because they are only able to realize very small material removal on the ceramic and thus the processes become very time-consuming and extensive. Ceramics have long served as a material for producing hip replacement prostheses. However, well-known procedures are not easily transferable to knee prosthetics. On the one hand, so far you cannot produce all ceramic knee prosthetics. As a result, you can also not test which requirements are necessary for such an implant for the prosthesis not to break and produce a low wear rate. This means that so far we are only able to stick to existing engineering standards for hip joint prosthetics and derive experience from there. On the other hand, a hip has a significantly simpler geometry than a knee replacement implant. A hip has three degrees of freedom, can turn in three directions, while a knee has six. This makes components far more complex and distinctive and this also needs to be reproducible by a machine. The IFW currently researches a manufacturing process that is meant to reproduce the complex form of the knee joint as well as possible. Surface finishing is particularly important for this. We do away with many individual process steps and implement a production process on one machine tool. We use a simultaneous multi-axle polishing process for this. We utilize toric mounted points that can be tilted in different directions. This makes the process very flexible. Thanks to this grinding process, we are able to achieve surface roughness of 0.1 micrometers. We subsequently use pliable tools. One characteristic of these pliable tools is that their bond is able to adapt to the implant surface geometry and thus no longer changes the contour accuracy we produced through the grinding process. A surface roughness value of less than 20 nanometers can be achieved with this polishing process and at the same time, the advantage for us is that we no longer influence the form with the polishing process. Christoph Herschler and his colleagues at the Biomechanics and Biomaterials Laboratory LBB at the Hanover Medical School study the wear and tear of all ceramic knee prosthetics. To do this, they developed a test facility that mimics the motion and strain of the knee joint. In our test facility, we examine simplified geometries under motion and strain similar to what happens in the knee to make sure that the wear and tear that would take place in the knee joint would also be as low as we envision. We do this under worst case conditions, that is, under extreme conditions, to be able to also account for this situation in our analysis. Under worst case conditions, that means under a beanspruchung die halt as extreme halt dargestellt werden kann, um auch eben diese Situation dann halt berücksichtigen zu können bei unseren Untersuchungen. Diese Rollgleitbewegung. You can envision this as a rolling sliding movement that takes place in the knee by having a condyle that has a cylindrical surface that rolls on the tibial plate and slides in different directions. Eine Oberfläche hat, die dann auf der tibiale Platte rollt und sich verschiebt in unterschiedlichen Richtungen. This is the so-called rolling sliding movement of the knee joint and we then transfer this movement onto these simplified samples in our test facility. The knee isn't just continuously strained, it's also the most strained joint in the human body. The new prosthetics also need to be able to withstand this requirement. The design of an all ceramic knee prosthetic needs to be adjusted to the material. Es dürfen keine Punktbelastungen stattfinden 
There must not be any point loads, and in our preliminary numerical simulations and studies on the impact of strain on implant stability, we were able to ensure that there won't be any failures due to implant overload. Versagen durch Überlast, äh, Überbelastung des Implantats halt ähm, äh, nicht stattfinden wird. Permanent knee joint damage can put a lot of stress on patients. This can be alleviated with prosthetics. Long-lasting ceramic prosthetics prevent premature wear and therefore more surgery. Für konventionelle Implantate. Surface roughness is important for low wear and tear with conventional implants made of metallic and plastic components because these tiny peaks on the metallic components act like small blades and create wear and tear in the plastic component. Today, ceramic implants in hips, for instance, are produced with similarly high surface texture, even though this is not necessarily required for low wear and tear. Unsere Untersuchungen zum Verschleiß our studies on wear and tear of these ceramic prosthetics have shown us that we were also able to verify reduced wear and tear in this instance, which is comparatively as low as we have already seen with the artificial hip, and we assume that this can then also be carried over to a finished prosthetic knee product. We go from that this can also be carried over to a knee product.